three counties, when they split and when they destroy this country, the people of the north, they will know how to defend themselves with AK-47s. The people of the north, because they are used to adversity and hardship, Mr. Speaker, finally they will extract the oil that lies under that soil, the water that lies in Turkana. Mr. Speaker, all I'm calling for is a government that looks at the big picture. All I'm calling for is a government that revisits and revises the injustices of the past. Mr. Speaker, all I'm calling for is a better definition of bottom-up. Bottom-up not being seen as stealing money from the poor to the pockets of the rich. Bottom-up meaning that the marginalized areas must be prioritized uh, in development order, uh, and planning Senator. in this republic. Mr. Speaker, I arrived at the pain of again asking that you request the Senator of Omar Bay to withdraw and apologize for his xenophobic remarks about Kiambu County. Mr. Speaker, we are painfully constructing a republic called Kenya. I know many children who are not Kikuyus, who are at Alliance Boys, Alliance Girls, Loreto, Mangu High School, name it, and there has never been a single report where any of the children has been attacked in school. In fact, my children go to those schools. If you have facts to demonstrate that somebody is marginalizing children from outside Kiambu, table them. If you don't, we want the peace to continue in those schools, and could you please withdraw and apologize? Which video? Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Senator Halwale has been in this parliament long enough to reflect on rulings that have been made in the past. Mr. Speaker, I, I, even though it is possible for me to bring uh, evidence to support what I have said, I will go by the decision of a speaker who is uh, very prodigious in terms of his uh, decisions. He said, you do not substantiate the obvious. Mr. Speaker, what I've said is in the public domain, but if Senator Halwale feels aggrieved, I withdraw and substitute Homer Bay in the place of Kiambu. I hope that will make him feel happy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, as, as, as I conclude, let us, let us pass this bill, but please, the chairs of finance, the chairs of delegated legislation committee, and the communities that were the true beneficiaries of this money, let us go back and make sure we right the wrongs that have been committed in the past five years by denying the true recipients of this money money and, and sending money to places where if they put more effort to collect on source revenue and if they use devolved funds better, they would be able to get faster results as opposed to our brothers from the north. Our brothers from the north and those who have been forgotten, left out as a result of sessional paper number 65, you shall get justice. And I can tell you, I can tell you without doubt or fear that if Raila Odinga was a president of Kenya, the conversation today would be different. You will not be begging. You will not be begging for um, Senator Kajwang, thank you. It's, it's uh, honorable members, honorable members, let's be in order. Honorable members, honorable members, Senator Cage, let's be orderly. Senator Gloria, Senator Gloria, let us be orderly. It is now 5.30 p.m., honorable members. Earlier on, um, there was an appointed time uh, following a motion moved by Senator Muma, understanding order that seven to discuss a definite matter of national importance. I will ask the mover to take her 10 minutes to move and speak to the motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, colleagues, uh, for supporting uh, this motion. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the motion that pursuant to Standing Order 37, the Senate do now adjourn to discuss a definite matter of urgent national importance, namely the discovery of mass graves thought to be those of Pastor Paul Mackenzie's followers who purportedly died of starvation as part of the religious conviction prevailing in Shakabola village, Kilifi County, since 20, uh, 20th April uh, 2023. 
Mr. Speaker, I think this matter is still live uh, in this country. And Mr. Speaker, I thought to bring this motion because I think we share in a collective shame that we could have a cult running in this country for up to 20 years and Mr. Speaker that it has ended up with a tragedy of the magnitude that we are being told, Mr. Speaker, the case is still unfolding. Apparently, we now have uh, 83 bodies that have been exhumed, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm being told 89 because I know the operations are still on. Mr. Speaker, the right to life is the number one right, is the primary right without which all other rights cannot be enjoyed. Mr. Speaker, when people are killed through starvation, the freedom from torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment is lost, Mr. Speaker. When that is meted upon children who have no right or cannot exp express themselves in terms of choosing a religion or uh, uh, an opinion, Mr. Speaker, that is unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, the story of the cult in Malindi, the story of Mr. Paul McKenzie and the wife happened in Malindi, but it is a national disaster because those affected are not just people from Malindi. Those affected come from various areas, including uh, Western Kenya, Kisi, uh, 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 Luo Nyanza, Nairobi, and other regions. Mr. Speaker, it is perplexing that we have a country that has security forces. We have a country that has a county security committee. But for 20 years, we have allowed this to happen. Mr. Speaker, the so-called Pastor McKenzie is a public figure that has been appearing even in some of the presidential campaigns. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to accuse anybody, but all I'm saying is it's a collective shame that we could have somebody like that passing and getting away with what he has actually gotten away, in my view, because those lives can never be recovered, even if he was to be shot, even if he was to be mutilated in public, it will never recover those, uh, uh, those, 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 those uh, lives that we have lost. Mr. Speaker, commenting on religion in this country is an abomination. The religious organizations sometimes make it difficult to point out at any issue that is of concern. And that has made everybody allow cults to come up, people to come up, set up any so-called church or religious organization that extorts poor people of money, that purport to, be, to have miraculous methods of curing disease, that prohibit children from going to school, that prohibit people from going to hospital. And Mr. Speaker, we continue to let them be. And yet the right to education is in the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, Article 53 provides for compulsory primary education for every child. So how we could have children claiming publicly that they are not going to school and nobody does anything about it is something that is not acceptable. I hope I have my 10 minutes. Mr. Speaker, as we move, I want to ask the question, why did this happen? The county governments, particularly governors, are never involved 
in county security committees. Beyond what the police are doing and the investigation teams are doing, Mr. Speaker, I think this House needs to come up with a policy decision that can see county governments participating in local security issues. Mr. Speaker, if there was investigation that actually pointed out to uh, funny decisions or funny things happening out, and a county governor was on that committee, the matter would not have reached where it has reached. Mr. Speaker, even as I say so, county governments have administrative officers, ward administrative officers, village administrative officers. The national government is supposed to have chief 